A strong personal brand helps to open doors and enables your creative work to reach more audiences. In this episode, podcaster, producer, and media personality, Saul Penduga, shares some of his strategies to building his personal brand. The podcast and chill co-host attribute some of his success to remaining true to himself. I think you remain relevant by remaining true to yourself, by remaining consistent. And when you remain true to yourself, you build a following. He says when luck meets preparation and talent, you get your big break. Thank you for listening to The Lead Creative. Please share this episode with your network. Ask them to share. Spread the love like butter on a hot, freshly baked bread in winter. Welcome to the Lead Creative Podcast, where we talk to creative industry leaders, influencers, and brands. We discuss the strategies that influence brand thinking and shape industries. Thought leaders and heads of agencies let us in on some of their thinking and insights. I'm your host, Mongye Simtati. Enjoy the show and please share and subscribe. So, welcome to the Lead Creative. Thanks for making the time to talk to us. Um, how are things going? Mongezi. <laughs> do I call you Mongezi? Yeah. What do they know you as here? <laughs> yeah, Mongezi is cool, it's man. Mongezi, yeah. 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 All right, Mongezi, yeah, man. Oh, man, thank you. Thank you for having me, bro. So, Saul, just to kick things off, I mean, I knew yeah. a teenage Solomzi Penduka who used to go by the AKA Savage, and that guy was a rapper, <laughs> right? If you were to encounter yeah, yeah. that fiery young lyricist today, what would you tell him about building his personal brand? Oh, man. Well, there's not a lot that he didn't know as well, but I would tell him that you are perfect the way you are. Um, the world will appreciate you as you are. Don't try to be anyone else. I know that you probably uh, didn't try to imitate anybody else out there but if you need the reassurance that you have it in you i know you already know that you know there's something special within you um but yeah just uh, 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 um, be patient things eventually come together and yeah because yeah, you know, that young yeah. guy, man, was knew, knew exactly where he, he would be and what he was born to do, to be honest. You know, and everything else that may have happened in his life was not a matter of he didn't know a lot about his personal brand or it was not by chance or by surprise. I'm not surprised today when I look back and I'm go, I go, hmm, I, I sort of knew this is where I'd be. So speaking to the personal brand, I'm not a master of, 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 of personal branding. I think all of us are just winging it as we go along. Obviously, there is things that you want to avoid doing. Um, but yeah, a lot of the stuff I was, I'd say, on track pretty much. Um, yeah. Professionally, there haven't been a lot of mistakes made. Right, right. So on the professional side of things, um, after working to build your name in the industry, working at YFM and later at 5FM, you found yourself a little bit on the outside of the industry, having to work your way back in. Can you talk us through what your strategy was to kind of coming back from that hiatus or that break that you had? You know, um, to be honest with you, man, like I said, right? A lot of things, I, I don't know. Maybe I, for me, I'm just lucky. But when I had left the, the media space, I truly had no intention of coming back into the media space. I didn't resent it. I wasn't aggrieved by anything. I just thought, okay, maybe there's a reason. Things happened in my personal life that had nothing to do with you know, uh, 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 the creative space, the media space, radio, music, whatsoever. And I'd left it and I thought, well, you know, I'm a believer in God. And I was like, well, God, if that's not what I'm meant to be, maybe that's why I'm no longer there. 
And when I came back, it totally happened by chance. But once I did come back, um, obviously you, you don't necessarily sit down and strategize, but maybe you do in your head, um, have somewhat of a plan. So what had happened was, because I used to work, this is where it starts. Yeah. Um, I used to work with Mac, uh, Mac G, who we do the podcast with um, at YFM, and obviously we're Facebook friends, because we used to work in the same building. You'd see my post. So I deactivated a lot of platforms. Only my Facebook was really active, um, but it was also very private. And I'd post a lot of stuff. And I think this was just after COVID, when COVID had just begun, lockdown and all. And he'd said he wants to uh, 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 interview me and we should do it like this, uh, virtually. And I said, nah, that's, that's whack. Um, vir virtually doesn't really work, you know, for, for the energy. Because I knew his podcast, I was familiar with it. I wasn't a big follower yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I said, let's wait till things open up. And then things opened up. And um, by then, his co-host had left. So I knew that he's probably looking for a co-host. Then I went there. And that's where everything then began. You know, right after that interview, I was like, yo, bro, uh, would you mind doing this thing with me on a permanent basis? Said, yeah, sure, no problem. We can give it a go. And that's where everything then began. So I had no intention. I, I wasn't deliberately trying to repenetrate sure. the, the industry. Mm -hmm. I just said, listen, um, if I'm meant to be there, there will be something that will trigger that pull and I'm, I'll welcome it. You know, I hadn't turned my back on the industry necessarily, yeah. but yeah. I wasn't doing everything it, it, it took to, to get back in. There was a period where I thought about it. I sent d uh, uh, demos around, made some calls, and I just didn't have the energy and it didn't feel right for some odd reason. It just didn't feel right. Um, and then, I, cause also I'm like, man, I know what I'm capable of and what I bring and all these people I'm talking to know very well what I can do and what I bring to the table as far as my abilities. So I, I just felt like it was a drag and it wasn't even a pride thing. It just didn't feel right. right. And um, then I continued about with my life doing whatever I was doing then, which was not in the entertainment industry at all. And uh, that's how then it began when um, we then started with Mac and I realized that, okay, well, people like me, sort of not surprised. Um, cause I mean, it's the same stuff I've always been doing even on the radio, but now mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. with more freedom, you know, you know how podcasting is with more freedom and, um, it's, it's free form. There's no music. There's no formatting per se. We don't really have a format. We just chat. So when that began, then obviously you, 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 you want to then explore all your other talents which I have done before, which is sure. uh, music, um, yeah. which is DJing. And you also want to take the opportunity as well to, you know, uh, reap the commercial benefits of it outside of um, the YouTube stuff. And, and then that's the route I took. And, um, and then other people will call you because when they can see you, you can present, you're doing this podcast, then they assume, which is... It's, 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 it's not a wrong assumption to say, oh, maybe yeah. you can also present a TV show and then yes. they'll invite you to come host a TV show to do X and Y and Z. So all those things. Yeah. Or, or, be, honestly, or be roasted on TV. Or be roasted on TV. Yeah, that, that was a balls up, absolute balls up, disaster class of notes. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but so what I'm getting, Saul, is that, yeah, what I'm getting, Saul, is that I think you... You made room for, I suppose, for things to happen organically. Um, yeah. And, and, and while when things happened organically, things also started opening up. Um, you were Pretty still much. exploring, you were still exploring your other creative pursuits and talents, exactly. even though you weren't in the media. Um, and just, and coming back into the media just gave you a different platform and a platform that you had explored before to kind of um, explore those talents. 
Yeah, pretty much. And I think the time out also, you come back, you're the same person, but you're also not because, you know, life experiences, you see the world, you know, differently, even your craft and the work that you do, you know, you, you, you view it differently because you've been away from it, number one, and you miss it. And there's just a mature thing, you know, when you come back, like I was a father, my, my outlook on the world was, 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 was a lot different. And that also, you know, you come back sort of with a, a, a reboost of some sort. And um, that also helped as well. But like you said, a lot of it was just organic, really. There was no planning drawing board sure. and, you know, a war room and strategy and strategize. This is how I'll do it. This is, and I see a lot of people do that. And I think we put so much emphasis on that at times, you know? Um, and a lot of people will tell you, man, sometimes it's just got, you're lucky. And also when luck meet, meets preparation or in our industry, a lot talent, you know, um, and then you get a break. I mean, I think Mac would have called anyone to host the, 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 the podcast with them. But if they weren't good at what they do, then maybe that's where it was just going to yeah. end. Yeah. You know, it was just going to be uh, Mac and his co-host and that's it. You know, so um, I was a bit fortunate in that case that, you know, I, I in my other pursuits, I also kept my mind sharp and I didn't just waste away. So by the time Mac says, hey, man, come on the podcast, let's interview you, come chill with us. And then I'm like a shed of, you know, who I am as far as my sure. abilities. Sure. So you, you talk about maturity. I think you mentioned maturity in there and... I just yeah. want to explore that a little bit more in the sense that that break might have given you a chance to kind of rethink how you want to be experienced or seen or viewed in the industry. When you got back, did you, did you almost, you know, did it give you that chance? Were you able to say, this is how things were when I was... Uh, when I was on these platforms before, this is how I want to be when I kind of get back. Did that break give you a, some perspective or a change in perspective? Like I said, during the break, I, I had no intentions of being back in this industry. However, once I was, that break did, you know, work to my advantage. And I realized that the best tool that I have, you know, is... I'm I'm a very honest person, and people seem to 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 like me. I'm I'm I'm, I'm I don't know. I'm a teddy bear, man. You know, and I wanted, and I knew that. Okay, that's what I'm going to use. You know, um, as my strength, um, especially with the platform that we have, the yeah. podcast, and uh, to share my journey with people and open up more. Because I realize that a lot of people out there go through things, especially you know adults. You, you've gone through things, you're still going through challenges. And a lot of times when we look out in the industry, we're not seeing, you know, the reflections of the normal, ordinary yeah. person. Um, and at the end of the day, we're all just human. So I, I felt like I want to share more of my human experience as much as I'm still delivering, you know, great, a great podcast with the humor, with, you know, the, 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 the little bits of, things sure, that we know sure. and, sh and impart some knowledge and whatever. But most important, importantly is to be more humane. And, uh, and, and, and because when I was out of the industry, I was really on the ground with black people, like everyday working class people, you know, not your MacBook Pros at the coffee shop kind of oaks. And it was just like really just ordinary, you know, m low income people. And that's the space I, I, I felt free in. And so I decided then when I came back that I'll be that You're more authentic. You know what I mean? Would, like, you say, sure. would you say you became yeah, a lot more authentic. authentic when you came back and, and that authenticity yeah. is paying off? It is. Whereas before I was authentic, but I was always trying to be like everybody else in the industry. You know, you want to, 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 to resonate with that crowd um, and sometimes it works for them, you know, the, the whole superficial 
thing it works out for other people but it's not me man you know and mm. and and yeah yeah definitely way way more th- authentic because f- of where i was the people i experienced and realize that these are the people who consume the stuff you know that the platforms that we're on be it radio sure. be it sure. be it be it be it podcast and i, th- I think people and people can tell man you know because there's so many mediums now there's podcasting there is everything else there's instagram tiktok and that you can all go live on it so people can tell the authentic you know authentic people from those who aren't and that's why possibly almost it still works for some people but gone are the days where you need to be this picture perfect individual just yeah. because you have a platform Mm. you know and 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 that's what i appreciate about the current landscape of the of 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 the industry and people can pick it up because they've been exposed to so many people be it on instagram live be it anyway it's no longer just you have to be this perfect guy with a perfect voice on the radio and 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 your life is just perfect you know so yeah authenticity man i think yeah, that's my yeah. strongest point exactly so unlike most people in the industry who kind of yeah. you know who, who had a break similar to you having a break you took a completely different route to almost relaunching yourself and you've mentioned this route which is a podcast where a lot of people or at, at least a lot of us believe that you know podcasting isn't as big but of course podcast and chill has changed the landscape where people have thought podcasts aren't as big in South Africa so mm-hmm. how did that non traditional route to relaunching coming back being in the media again um help to open doors did it help to open doors for you because well, it, it did i mean yeah it did i think it did um i mean firstly i'm on the radio now because of the podcast you know and everything else that i've done um the 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 tv stuff the bit of tv stuff that i've done the, the 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 gigging that I've done and everything else I can't mention everything now I'm forgetting a lot of things but they all came from the podcast and I think it's a platform to show and even if the podcast wasn't doing well so great but a person with the ear and an eye for the talent would mm. tell that okay that guy is a good broadcaster sure let's give him a shot you know um so i think it 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 reminded people and showed people that oh okay from this thing that you do obviously if you can speak for 3 hours on a podcast and do it very well and communicate messages and there's a lot of things you know to and and hold a conversation about a lot of things then one could say okay maybe can work then on the radio you know so uh, 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 um uh, it like i said it was not all deliberate sure but sure. there was also that expectation that okay other opportunities would come from this just like with anything else mm. pretty much you know uh, uh, um so uh, the podcast definitely did open doors a lot of doors right so 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 in that i think it it, it isn't something it isn't platform specific so basically explore the platforms available to you in order yeah. for you to be able to engage and interact with an audience because what ultimately what this is is interacting and engaging with an audience in a way that mm-hmm. is authentic to you and in a way that that kind of lives up to what the platform expects or anticipates. Yeah, well you just said it, yeah. So on that um on that note um so the podcast doesn't have as many restrictions you've mentioned this i mean doesn't have as yeah. many restrictions as radio it's a lot mm-hmm. it's it's more free form there's yeah. a lot there that's kind of different from the traditional media space how yeah. do you balance the you know the freedom of the podcast with sort of the restrictions on radio on either platform when you are on the one platform and not the other it's, it's simple man i mean it's like your register when you are chilling at a bar with your friends versus the register when you're in a boardroom you know with colleagues so 
And like I said, being authentic means you're human. And on the podcast, it is restricted. I mean, it's unrestricted. Um, there is an 18 sign there, meaning you can swear a lot, you can do all these things, but it doesn't necessarily mean swear in every sentence, right? You're gonna obviously use it um, for effect when necessary also. And you speak about a whole host of things and people can tell that, okay, these guys can talk about maybe some really explicit stuff, but there is a brain behind it, you know, all of that. And they can tell that I'm sensible. I speak about being a parent, being a father. So then when I go on the radio and the explicit stuff is not there, it doesn't sound like, oh, it's he's empty. That's all that makes him. You know what I mean? So I think because on the podcast, we show different sides of, of, of us. And when people tune in on the radio, they don't expect certain sides because it is the radio. You're on the breakfast show. You're broadcasting to kids. You get me? So there's certain jokes you can't make. There's certain remarks that you can't make. But it doesn't mean you're not genuine. You're still that guy because the humor of that guy is still there. The, 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 the animated, you know, personality of that guy is still there. The colorful, you know, nature of that guy is still there on the radio. But obviously without the chilling around the bride with the gents uh, 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 um, um, kind of posture, you know. So I think it's, it's pretty easy, man, to find that, that balance. Just like everybody finds a balance between work and outside of work. It's, 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 it's pretty much the same thing. And when you're authentic... Because I don't get on the podcast and act like this is all that I'm about. Sure. Strippers, you know, porn and all these other stuff. And then on the radio, it's like, oh, who's this guy? Yes. You know? I mean, uh, uh, on the podcast, we'll talk about a whole host of things. We'll have a, an OnlyFans girl in studio doing God knows what. But that is literally like a 10% of my entire makeup and point of interest yeah, you know yeah. so uh, uh uh it's 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 very easy to find that right. balance bro it's yeah it's, it's it's super easy and people get it because it's not like you're getting two different people now nah, it's just that there's restrictions on the radio therefore there'll be restrictions as far as what and also i've got a way of i'm, I'm able to say stuff you know with so mac and i were very like not polar opposites but he's a person, who, if he's going to say something, he'll say it like this anyway, you know. But I can say or convey a message, but there's a PC way of sure. doing it for yeah. the radio, you know. And I'm, I'm able to do that. Even on the podcast, some things I don't put as crassly as the first, you know, uh, 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 idea that comes to my mind. But I can take that very same idea and deliver it and convey the message, but without being too crass, you know? So I think because of that, I'm able to just find a balance on the radio easily. If you're enjoying The Lead Creative, please share this episode with your network and hit follow or subscribe. Enjoy the show. Now, you, you mentioned earlier that you, 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 there was a time when you weren't on social media, or at least you sort of restricted your accounts, you weren't as active, and you are a lot more active now. And of course, your social media accounts and presence is growing. With this growth in your presence on social media, how do you manage community dynamics because you now have a community of like a lot of followers do you manage that do you have a strategy do you do you kind of how do you interact and engage with your community in a way that's once again authentic to you and still makes sense and enables you to keep growing as you know as someone doing um, the kind of creative work that you're doing look it's 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 always tricky because as much as you're the podcast guy um, and you're authentic, now, well, firstly, you handle your own Twitter accounts. And I've seen people have managers run their Twitter accounts. It's always better to handle your own Twitter account. And then secondly, with me, I'm always conflicted because sometimes I want to address something urgently now on Twitter or on Facebook. But then I realize 
it could be misconstrued in, in one way or the other. And secondly, I've got a platform, the podcast, where I could actually just address something, you know? Yes. Um, so a lot of the things I, I, I at times, uh, reserve commentary, you know, uh, uh, from Twitter and stuff. And then I'd rather mention on the podcast because some things are also... A, a, a conversation starter as well, you know, so it's finding the balance between not wasting some of the stuff for social media because as much as that also, it's it's a secondary means of an income as well, you know, because yeah. with the growth of the social media, then you get to, you know, collaborate with, 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 with brands and stuff, but uh, 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 um, for Twitter and social media generally, handle it yourself and just be authentic and it's also a way of because at times people will ask you about something you said on the podcast and you can't really say i'm going to address that on the next podcast because we've moved on and then you're able to to engage deeper with people you know but for me mainly it was a thing of just keeping my ears on the ground it's not a whole strategized thing yeah yeah uh, of, of this is how we're going to grow followers this now nah. and they, they just really just follow you organically and some people will unfollow you and or, or, or say something and say i don't like you on twitter but i like you on the podcast you know sure and for me that's also like okay that's fine then you know just like on the podcast you don't agree with all my opinions on twitter i'm the one handling my twitter account and any other social media account that's in my name so you know that those are my thoughts. And to me, it's just a way of, and also remember that it's, we're not just on social media as an extension of our brands only, yes. but also as human beings. And yeah. sometimes you also wanna, you know, see what's happening with the, the uh, with the submarine, you know, that, you know, blew up on its way to the, the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. If there's jokes flying around, you also just wanna partake in that and just be human. Now on, on those on those things on those things actually on the thi- on on the sort of things that could be perceived or things that are sensitive that are happening um which in many instances tend to tend to overlap with your work with your brand with other spaces that you occupy how do you navigate the complexities of this isn't something oh. I, you know, this isn't the kind of conversation or roots of conversation that I go down because it may come out in other platforms and affect me in my other work. Do you, do you, how do you address those kinds of things? Ah, bro, honestly speaking, I just leave them. You know, there's certain things that it's like LGP, LGBT uh, are, are things. Um, because there was the stigma that we are anti and which was totally incorrect inaccurate i just leave them you know because there are certain things when you're like oh if i comment on this and it's a valid comment people are not going to look at it as a valid comment they're going to look at who did who said it and then they're going to you know take a, a snippet of the podcast which paints me in a certain light to push their narrative so with those things i just look at them and i leave them if it's going to compromise me um in any way on my other work I just leave it, to be honest. And also, I've learned that you don't need to comment on everything on social media. And that doesn't go to just people within the industry, just to any ordinary person on social media. You don't have to have a comment on everything. Just like you don't have to respond to everyone. So with those certain things, I just leave them, literally. Yeah. I used to, you know, always feel the need to, oh, but I just, I just leave them. I'm like, oh, okay, this, leave I think from my you, you mentioned you you mentioned you're mentioning something that yeah that that I'm finding very interesting about um, what you guys are doing on the podcast and of course some of the conversations yeah. that you have on social media where in some instances mm. you come uh, very close to this notion of what we refer to now as as cancel culture you've you come very close to that and sometimes you've actually been in instances where you would have had to navigate the complexities 
of cancel culture, of how it, you know, how it, how it kind of operates. How do you navigate th those kinds of things? How do you, how do, do you, you know, how do you manage the conversations and engage in a way that, well, keeps you clear of it? Or if you are, you know, you, or if you are in the midst of it, then engage with, you know, with, with things head on. Oh man, um, look, bro, we can't really pussyfoot sometimes around certain um, subject matter and not, you know, uh, express our honest opinions, especially if your honest opinion is a sober opinion, you know, because there's this thing called cancel culture. Um, I mean, they once tried to cancel us and I think a lot of people thought we, we, we were canceled, but I always feel like there's a... The, 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 there's a, a threshold, you know, or there's like a, a, a this barrier, you know, of cancel culture. And once you're through that, like us on the podcast, you pretty much, I'll say it plainly, you know, and also not to be abused, but you pretty much, you get to a point where you're sort of uncancelable because then the brands that know what you do and that you're good at it will still gravitate towards you. They haven't canceled you. You know, there's so many brands that had dropped us because there was a bit of noise, hashtag cancel culture. And um, then there was a period where a lot of brands weren't, you know, coming towards us because of they weren't even getting the, 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 the context of what had happened for us to get canceled. It was just there was noise around us and they were scared to be on the receiving end of any backlash. Um, of being affiliated with us. But over time, when brands and people likewise look beyond that noise and hear the message that what are you about exactly? What's your content about? Uh, 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 um, what are you about? And those people and those brands stick with you. And so you're not threatened by cancel culture and that you can't uh, you know, share your, your, your opinions on things, especially, like I said, if your opinions are well thought out and you're bringing a solid argument to a table about any subject. So with us, we are pretty much undeterred by cancel culture. Um, and I'm not saying we are immune to it now, but we, 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 we've seen, I think, not the worst of it, but we really, you know, got hit by, 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 by cancel culture. Um, but I think when the noise really settles down, people, those who are interested and who are willing, hear your message. You know, there was a time where they said, hey, we are uh, homophobes, etc., etc." But I mean, when we do events, um, and I mean, even now I get booked to, 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 to events that are, are, are safe spaces for people of all walks of life. Um, we've got chillers, you know, within the communities that supposedly were trying to, to cancel us because sometimes people will just follow the herd of cancel culture without actually asking themselves, why are we canceling these guys? What was the context of what was said that we're canceling them? So eventually people, you know, uh, 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 um, I think eventually people give you a chance to hear you out and it's up to them to make a decision. Um, but cancel culture as a whole, I'm not really someone who, who believes in it. It's, it's noise, man. It's, it's, a, it's a witch hunt, you know? And people seem to join this witch hunt without even asking themselves, why are we hunting this particular witch? It's like, oh, they've been hunted. Why? They asked somebody else. Like, oh, they said, oh, I heard so-and-so. And that's all it is. So, yeah, man, cancel culture doesn't really play... play it, I mean, I'm on radio, I'm on breakfast radio, I talk to kids, they love me, I love them, I go to events, kids want to take pictures with me, Yeah. grannies yeah. want to take pictures with sure. me, sure. they love my work, they adore me, I appreciate the love, how am I, you know, cancelled, and yet we've, we've gone through that, and, and, and I, I think, yeah, um, but not to abuse it as well, it doesn't mean we're immune, but it's it simply means you can actually say your honest opinion on things and people will say, oh, it's from those guys. They're honest oaks. And it just gives you that, that brand and that look, you know? 
it's also important to understand your community. I'm guessing um, because in all of this, in all of this, you've 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 built a community, and I get a sense that it's because of this community that you've built that represents people from all walks of life. That that community also comes into these conversations and 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 speaks to this authenticity that you've built. Definitely, bro. It's, you've hit it on the on the head. Understand your community, because like with us, when we got cancelled, our community was like, "Well, what do you mean, guys? Have you guys? I mean, these guys. The other week they were talking about X and Y and Z, and actually there've been many moments where they've supported, you know, this movement and that movement, and they made a joke. Yeah, it could have been in bad taste, but we know our community, and also when we start to cower to 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 cancel culture and we're not getting cancelled by our community and then and we start to filter our conversations too much and we're pc too much and then our community we lose our community for who for people who aren't even part of our community so you're right man um you need to be able to communicate you know uh, uh with your community and stay true to 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 to, to your community and i think that's one of the things that have carried us you know, and at the end of the day, a lot of big brands, they want to work, they want to see numbers at the end of the day, and that you've got a solid community, a loyal community, and they're not blindly loyal, you know, mind you, if we, we say something, or we err on something, they'll tell you that, ah, you guys here, you flopped, or here, we disagree with you, and that's the kind of community we have, you know, when we say things, people don't just do them um but uh, they do also you know correct us if they think we're wrong and it's that kind of a community you know and um i think being honest to your community and being true and staying true to your community also helps um a lot because you'll find a lot of times you're getting cancelled by people who are not even part of your community or part of your so-called fan base if you're enjoying The Lead Creative, please share this episode with your network and hit follow or subscribe. Enjoy the show. Mm. Speaking of community and understanding your community, you also create music um, and you launched your video in recent times. Yeah. How does mm. your understanding of your community and the people that you DJ for the people you interact with come into play when creating your music in your creative process? Does it influence it at all? Or do you get inspired by something and create from that? Look, I mean, I'm, I'm part of the people I'm creating the music for. So the music that I create is the music that I also listen to. So I am part of that crowd. Um, when I open my Spotify, for example, I listen to the same playlist. I gravitate towards the same playlist. I hang around in, in the same places they hang around with. So a lot of times when I create music, I, I create music that I would listen to, you know? And, um, and, and, and I think with music, I've always taken from different sources of inspiration that are outside of whatever genre that I'm making. And I try to find a way to bring that in. And a lot of times I find if it resonates with me, it will then resonate with, you know, uh, the, 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 the listener that I'm making the music right. for. Because I'm part of the demographic that I'm targeting the music to. So to me, I always say, just trust your dopeness, man. If I hear it and I like it, then I'll, 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 I'll release it. You know, sometimes it may be too different, but you don't push the envelope, you know, by staying the same and sounding like everybody else. So as far as music, I draw from different inspirations, but I go with what I like. I don't like hearing stuff out there and then copying it. I go with what I like and then I realize that I'm part of the target market that listens to this music. So if I like it, hopefully as many people as possible would like it. So in this idea of, with this idea of trusting your dopeness, even though you do, at times creative people kind of want to also test the ideas. How do you test your ideas so that you're not almost in your own echo chamber when you create and work on things? Uh, well, I ask my woman firstly, you know, because she also vibes with the music. You know, what do you think of this? Um, or at times, I'm a DJ, so I'll just throw in a song, um, you know, that I'm working on or that I've just finished. 
or at times you you you'll post something on social media and not say that it's by you because once you tell people this is by me they are more critical and every time you give people the opportunity to critique something that's in the making then suddenly they feel like they are now musicians as mm. well you know like if you're building a car and you tell someone hey i'm in the process of building a car it's not done what do you think suddenly they'll think they uh, they are automobile engineers right or say no these but you're like whereas if you finish the car and you present it to them you're like hey here's the car drive it don't even tell them you made it because once you tell them you made it they'll start being too technical because you know they feel like they've got an influence on something in the outcome they're yeah. part of the creative yeah. process on the outcome exactly so um, I'll post something on social media and not say who's by or 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 play it in my car and I know I'm going to have people in my car and not tell them who's by and like that you're genuinely able to gauge because you keep quiet you just play it and you're able to gauge the true response you know uh, uh without the no bias um, the the yeah without any bias or the filter of this is by Saul okay let's hear yes, it yes. you know and they always want that connection connecting you to what they hearing and so uh, to me it's just giving it to people especially within my close yeah. circles without necessarily telling them that this is me obviously at home with my woman she can hear when i'm making this stuff you know and also at times i'll just make something and peep to see if you know she she jamming to it and yeah that's my little microwave of yeah. testing stuff so, so out, you almost you know, create you almost actually, create the environment for for testing without necessarily influencing the outcome yes you you said it correctly without necessarily you know say hey i'm testing my music and i just cuz it's music you just play it man so so in uh, in closing um what are your thoughts or at least what's your strategy to remaining relevant in a place that's so noisy and industry that has so many people kind of coming and going having called it a you know a one hit and never kind of coming back how how do you remain relevant I think you remain relevant by remaining true to yourself by remaining consistent and when you remain true to yourself you build a following there's a guy and I'll speak music but this applies in every other thing that you know one does uh Kelvin Momo you know um and he's got a very particular sound but it didn't just blow up out of nowhere um at first it was very niche and he's on a, i think his third or fourth album now but he's one of the commercially most successful most identifiable people with that sound that used to be just niche and it's through one thing through consistency like i told you four albums and hundreds of songs out there um and through remaining true to that group of 15 people who really love what you do and you remain true to them just like on the podcast you remain true to the 10,000 subscribers you have and then they become 50 and you still remain true and you remain consistent you upload twice a week you know for two years three years and remaining consistent and that's how you know you remain relevant till the wheels come off because there will always be something that will come you know maybe that's bigger that's better but if you're lucky with those you know a few uh 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 elements just uh, being true to your your the people that you 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 do the stuff for um keep trying to improve your craft and be consistent in the output of your craft i think you know uh, uh, uh you can remain relevant for a while and people can come and go and i think people who have proven this it's guys like Casper Newvest i mean he's been around for how many years you know and that's all he's done you know stay true to his people even when people say ah your punchlines are whack you're not a lyricist you can't rap but he will do what he does for the people he does it for and you'll do it well try and improve at it and also be consistent in doing it and he's here after how many years you know um yeah and also just know what you're about man know what you came here for cuz sometimes people want to be all over cuz that's another thing people get fame it's famous like a drug you know people want to be like you're a podcaster but now you want to 
be all over, man. Sometimes I decline a lot of events yeah. I'm invited yes. to, you know. I'm like, but oh, oh I just want to do is podcast, DJ, music, radio. Already that's yeah. a lot, you know. So just stick to the stuff that you are good at and the stuff that you truly, genuinely want to do and the stuff that you are happy doing, you know. Um, at times, you lose a lot of relevance by trying to, you know, uh, uh, have your, your, your hand in every, in every jar um, just because of either it's going to help you reach and at times I don't even enjoy doing certain things. Even with me, as I look back, I'm like, damn, there's certain things I shouldn't have yeah. done, you know, like the, the roast, for example, because the way it had happened also, I was traveling, I was abroad, I came back, people had been practicing for two months, three months, and I realized that I was called in because somebody had, uh, um, had, had, had dropped them, you know? So and I realized that I shouldn't have done that, you know, because number one, now I'm not enjoying it. I'm under pressure um, and I shouldn't have been there, you know? So that's one way as well of remaining relevant is don't be all over the place because you'll lose that consistency. People know you for a particular level of excellence and now they experience you and it's not there because you just took it because it's a gig, awesome. right? Yeah. And it's not like you loved mm. being there. So yeah. yeah, so thank you so much uh, for making the time. It was absolutely amazing. Thanks, bro. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we got a lot out of that and, and I'm sure that our listeners cool, will man. too. Thank you for listening to The Lead Creative. Did you get one insight that's worth sharing from this episode? Please share it with your network or your friends. Pop me some of your ideas and innovative finds on Twitter, on at Mongesi. This podcast is available on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, Google, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also find me on mongesi.com. <laughs>